Hi, my name is Aaron Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to this free series of video tutorials on Maya Animation Fundamentals. This video series is all about getting familiar with the essential production workflow for animation in Maya. It's a deceptively simple project, a bouncing ball. Actually, there's quite a lot going on in a simple bouncing ball. It has to move, rotate, and deform in a convincing manner. To effectively accomplish our production goals, we need to follow certain guidelines and best practices. Typically in Maya, these techniques are not spelled out for you in an obvious fashion. So that's where I come in. I can train you to speak the language that Maya understands so that you can accomplish the desired result. For an experienced Maya user, this project would not take very long, only a few minutes. However, in this series, we are exploring everything in Maya for the first time, so it takes quite a lot longer to go through it. In this two-hour series, you will get a complete overview of the animation process in Maya, including the following. Scene layout and cameras, materials, keyframe animation, lighting, and rendering. We assume that you already know the basics of Maya, its interface, and key terms such as transforms and attributes. If not, then please go watch my free video series on Maya Basics first. So let's go have some fun animating a bouncing ball in Maya. The very first thing we need to do whenever starting a new project in Maya is to create a new project folder. Maya stores a whole bunch of different files. Scene files which store 3D data, and image files that store 2D information, pictures. And Maya needs to keep track of all these and the links between them. So that, for example, when you put a texture on a surface, when you load the scene, the texture file will be found. So it's very, very critical that you know where your current project is and put all of your data in there. So we have to create a new project to begin. In the file menu, there's a menu item that says project. And you'll see there are three items within there. So let's go into edit current first and see what the status is. So when I click on that, I get a window popping up, edit project. And this just tells me where my current project is. So it's a folder named default and it's located inside of my documents. And this is in fact the default project folder. This is where Maya is gonna go first to look for scenes and images unless we create our own project. Okay, so this is the default project. And in here are a whole bunch of subfolders. Okay, we're not gonna change any of this now, we're just gonna click Accept because I just wanted to see what my current project is. If I go to Windows Explorer and go to My Documents, you'll see there's a folder, Maya. We've been here before when we were deleting our preferences to wipe Maya's interface back to factory defaults. In here, you'll also see a folder called Projects. And if I open that up, you'll see Default. So this gets created when you install Maya, a default project with all of the default subfolders, such as Scenes and Source Images. I currently already have some things within these folders, so I'm not gonna use this default project. I'm gonna make a new project for the bouncing ball. So back in Maya, I'll click on File, Project New. And I need to give my new project a name, a location, and I have to fill in all the blanks here. So the name of my project will be Maya Ball Project. I do like to put the word project in the folder name so I'll know that it's a special Maya project folder. Then I have to navigate to a location. Click Browse, and I've got a folder on, in this case, my G drive that I've already created in advance. It's here, okay? So I've just established the location for my new project. Then I have to go here down at the bottom of the dialog and click Use Defaults, and that fills in all the blanks. So I've done what I need to do. I've set a name for my project, a location, and filled in all the blanks with the default folder names. 
And when I click Accept, Maya creates the new project folder structure in the location that I specified. So if I go and look, I've now got in this bouncing a ball folder, Maya ball project. And it's got all of the default subfolders in it. It's very important that you do this. You cannot skip this step. You have to do it every time you start a new project in Maya. And finally, if I wanted to go back to my default or any other project, I could go to Project Set, and that allows me to then browse for a different project. But I'm going to cancel that now because I've got it set the way I want it. Next, I'm going to set up my working units. I can choose whether I want to use metric or imperial units. So let's go into Maya's Windows, Setting Preferences, Preferences and check our working units. I'll go within the Preferences window to Settings. And here you can see my working units are listed. Linear working units are defaulted to centimeter. Angular is set to degrees and time is 24 frames a second. If I wanted to work in imperial units, feet and inches, I would choose inch. Notice that my grid is changing size when I do this. Objects in my world aren't going to change size, but my grid is. My advice to you is the only safe options within this working units are centimeters and inch. Centimeter and inch. The others, you may experience problems if you choose millimeters or feet or meters. So I advise centimeters or inches only. We'll just leave it at centimeters because that's the international standard. For time, I am going to leave that at the default also, which is 24 frames a second, which is film standard speed in the United States. So my working units are already set up pretty much the way I want them. Click Save. Next, I've got to set up my grid. So the grid, the size and the display of the grid are handled separately from the working units. So I'm going to go and adjust the size of the grid by going to the display menu, grid, options, get my grid options dialog up. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on if first of all we turn on numbers on the grid for both the perspective and the orthographic views. So I'm going to turn on these numbers by clicking on axes and hitting apply and now you'll see some numbers appearing on my screen. And again remember those numbers are in centimeters. It's also really helpful to change the grid line color because there's actually two sets of grid lines the major grid lines and the subdivision lines so it helps if these are two different colors. So I'm going to set the grid lines and numbers to a slightly darker color and press apply. Okay, so what this is doing is the first field here is the extent of the grid in the perspective view from the center to the edge. And the default in Maya is 12. So the default Maya grid is only 12 centimeters from center to edge. Tap the space bar and go back to the top and front views and you'll see that those grids extend infinitely. There's no limit to the grid in the ortho views.